Well, it's that time again. I got some more lamps. This time, we're gonna be taking a look at the Alaska Northern Lights. These lamps all claim to put out over 10,000 lux at two feet, which is a pretty bold claim. So we're gonna be putting them through our usual testing, and I use these myself, so I'll be able to tell you which ones I like and which ones I don't, and which ones you might be interested in. Before we dive into the data, though, let's briefly go over the features of each lamp and what sets them apart from each other. Alaska Northern Lights offers three lights, the Aurora Light Pad Mini, the Max, and the North Star. The Mini and Max are both newer LED panels that sport an array of 160 and 600 LEDs, respectively. Both of them are designed to be used on a desk and can be angled easily. They both have around a nine foot power cord, which is pretty handy. This is much longer than most of the other lamps I've tested. In order to use these, you just long press the front capacitive button for a couple seconds, and then you can tap it to cycle through the three brightness settings. I'm not a huge fan of capacitive buttons, but it is what it is. It seems like pretty much everyone uses them nowadays. These are rather pricey in the world of light therapy lamps. The Max is gonna run you a juicy $400 after taxes, while the Mini is gonna be closer to 200. Now, surprisingly, the Mini is actually brighter than the Max. However, there are advantages to going with the Max over the Mini that we're gonna go over later. Now, the North Star is an older model that Alaska Northern Lights has been selling for over 20 years. And this shows because it still uses two large fluorescent lights for its light output. It's a simple beast with just an on-off button, and that's it. Now, the advantage of this is that, in theory, you can put this on, say, a smart plug or a smart switch to turn it off and on, which you can't do with the capacitive button style lamps. It's not as powerful as the Mini or Max, but it's still more powerful than every other lamp I've tested. And as we'll go over later, it's not all about the Lux output. The North Star is immensely more comfortable to look at and brighter than many of the lamps on the market. And that means something. But this brings me to our first test, Lux output. Like every other lamp we've tested, we put these one foot in front of our spectrometer and ran a test for one hour. And here's what we got. The Mini is putting out just over 40,000 lux at one foot, while the Max is sitting at just over 30,000. The North Star is coming in last at just under 20,000, but this is still pretty impressive, especially considering its size. You can see that the lux levels drop pretty significantly just two feet away, which is how it works with all light sources. Now from that data alone, you might be thinking it's obvious you should choose the Mini. It's the cheapest and the brightest. But there's another metric we need to consider here because the size of a light in relation to its output is a very important thing to consider. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is lux per square inch or sort of the glare of a light. You see, the more lux per square inch, the more uncomfortable a light is to look at. You can just think about a flashlight which is far less bright than just standing outside, but if you shine one in someone's eyes, they can't bear to look at it. Here's a graph of this metric for all three of these lights. You see, while the Mini is technically putting out 27% more lux than the Max, and around 60% more than the North Star, because of its small size, it feels almost four and a half times brighter than the Max and 23 times brighter than the North Star. So is that trade-off worth it? I mean, the performance is there, but man, this thing is extremely uncomfortable to look at. I mean, you can't look at it. It's like staring directly into a flashlight. So you can have it off to the side, but even then it's, it, it can be kind of uncomfortable. So something to be aware of. The LightPad Mini in particular is kind of like a spotlight. I have a video of me shining it around and you can see it's sort of like a flashlight, a large flashlight. The Max isn't quite as bad. It has a much wider spread. And as you can see in that graph, the lux per square inch is much lower than the Mini. So even though the Mini is more powerful, technically, I think the Max is actually the more effective one because you can stand to keep it on a higher power and closer to you than the Mini. If you guys want to compare this type of data to all the other lamps we've tested, there's a link to our database in the description below. Next, I wanna quickly go over color quality and flicker, and then we'll get to my final thoughts and recommendations. 
As far as the color quality for these lights goes, they're subpar at best. A CRI of 100 indicates that a light source reflects the colors of things naturally like sunlight does. And as you can see with these lights, they range from 70 to 80, which is pretty poor. Notably, the North Star is performing the worst, which is pretty typical of a low quality fluorescent bulb. Now, color rendering is not a particularly important metric for a sad lamp to be effective, but I'm a bit of a light snob and I like a light source to be similar to sunlight if I can help it. Next, we have the spectral power distribution graphs, which show us what these lights really look like and what color temperature they are. So as you can see, the mini and max are around 64 to 6,500 Kelvin, which is a pretty cool color. And the North Star is much warmer at around 4,300 Kelvin. This could be more comfortable for you. It's a little more similar to morning sunlight, but you can see that spiky graph that is so common to fluorescent lights. Now flicker. The LED panels on the Mini and Max are putting out a high frequency flicker that I'm not really concerned with. This is pretty typical for almost any high quality LED power driver. Now the North Star, however, even though they advertise using a 25,000 Hertz ballast, which should result in a high frequency flicker, we actually measured a fairly low frequency 120 Hertz flicker at around a 23% depth, which puts this in the high risk category for some people. So if you find that you like to avoid lights that have a low frequency invisible flicker, I would avoid this one. You can actually capture it on slow motion video, so it's definitely there. Low frequency flicker doesn't seem to bother me much, but again, something to consider. Okay, final thoughts. So far, these three lights have been basically the brightest light therapy lamps that I've tested. So if you're looking for something very bright, I would get one of these, but which one? I think they all serve a particular niche. Personally, I found myself preferring the Max and the North Star. The Max is expensive, but it's very bright and the glare rating is pretty reasonable for the Lux output. I actually found that I could use it, you know, within a foot, a foot and a half without really feeling too uncomfortable. It's also got a seven year warranty, so you can rest easy knowing that it's probably gonna last you for a long time. Now, a reason to get the Mini is of course, because it's cheaper, but it is also unbearably bright. You can always dim it or move it further away, but then it does become less effective. And for this reason, I think the Max is the more effective option. Now, the same small size that makes the Mini so terrifyingly bright is also one of its biggest pros. If you're looking for something small and powerful and effective that you wanna travel with or take to and from home and work, then the Mini would be the prime choice. It is by far the smallest, brightest light therapy lamp on the market that I'm aware of. So if that's something you're looking for, go ahead and grab the Mini. Speaking of size, that brings me to the North Star. It's big, it's antiquated, and you may have written it off because of that, but I wouldn't be so quick. The big selling point for the North Star is its massive size. You see, even though it's putting out maybe half the lux that the Mini is at one foot, it's so big that the lux per square inch is around 75, which is just unheard of for the total lux output. This means that you can sit comfortably one foot away from this thing at 20,000 lux without it feeling even remotely uncomfortable. I feel like this can't be understated. For example, let's take a look at our database. If we sort the table by glare or lux per square inch and scroll down to where we see the North Star, we can see that nothing really comes close to being this bright with such a low glare. Now, if we scroll a little further down, we can see that the only other light that comes close to this kind of ratio is the Carex Daylight Classic which I just did a video on as well, that's another pretty comfortable light. I personally really like a bright light, but I also like a comfortable light. And if a light's really uncomfortable to use, you probably won't want to use it. And really the best light therapy lamp is the one that you use. So if you're someone who finds yourself sensitive to bright sunlight or you know bright glare, I would consider using the North Star. It's probably one of the most effective glare-free light therapy lamps that you can get. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate you hitting the like button. It really helps me out. And if you stuck around this far, the next video I think I'm gonna be putting out is on my DIY light therapy lamp. We're gonna be using full spectrum LED strips and all kinds of other knickknacks to make our own really high quality light therapy lamp that can be kind of mounted on a desk. That's the plan anyways, we'll see how it turns out. 
So stick around for that. And again, there is a link below to our database as well as affiliate links for these products. If you feel like buying one and you wanna help us out, they're down there. All right, see you guys next time.